It was on the 16th day of June 2000 that witnessed the birth of a new Rwanda National Police. The almost 14-year-old institution emerged from the forces that existed before the 1994 liberation. And these were Gendarmerie Nationale, which was under the Minister of Defense, the Communal Police under the Minister of Internal Affairs, and Judicial Police under the Minister of Justice. From a skeletal force to a small modest visionary force of 3,000 men and women in the year 2000 to over 10,000 strong force to date. This spell success is a combined effort of a visionary leader with a zealous team supported by ever willing partners and a pleased populace. The President of the Republic of Rwanda has always been at the helm of the development mission that seeks to provide peace and security to the people of Rwanda. <laughs> In achieving this, a strong partnership with the people we serve is enormously required. See them in their blue garbs. Every gun welding police officer has gone through intensive hard work of training, which is a cornerstone to readiness. The training starts with the paramilitary drills involving serious war techniques, police law, social science, and the pass out. These unity's objectives are based on the duties and responsibilities assigned by the state. These are prevention, detection, and combating terrorist activities cooperating with other security organs at national and international level in terms of information sharing. More police officers were trained in specialized fields such as CID, community policing, anti-GBV training, road safety rules and regulations, criminology master's degree, audit for monitoring and evaluation of police performance, and fighting corruption, fire and rescue training, peace support operations training including female police officers, more courses are conducted at the newly inaugurated National Police College, with the second intake of its senior command and staff course ongoing. Twelve countries, to as far as Ghana, attended the previous intake. Rwanda National Police has developed ways of extending its services to further strengthen its cooperation with the people of Rwanda and beyond. Through electronic policing, which is a collection, storage, and sharing of information between citizens and the police, i.e., registration for the driver's license tests, results, police recruitment form, etc. Today, the capacity of CID in terms of human resources and structure has modernized and equipped to cover the entire nation. For crime scene management, the forensic laboratory has been equipped to professionally produce evidences that bring to justice the offenders of the laws that govern the country. In response to GBV, Isangi One Stop Center, which caters for GBV victims, was established and officiated by the First Lady Madame Jeanette Kagami and the Anti-GBV and Child Protection Directorate. With this unit, the institution has focused more on equipping and modernizing it with the state-of-art gear to improve road safety measures put in place that have made Rwanda's roads the safest with minimal crashes in the region. The community and Rwanda National Police recognize the importance of strengthening partnerships and securing the environment. This builds confidence that this well-thought program assists in crime prevention and the attainment of security that is a fundamental basis for development and the vision of Rwanda. Campaigns and sensitization programs that engage the community have tremendously helped in reducing crimes. Since 2010, Rwanda National Police scaled up its community outreach mission to further tap the root cause of crimes by engaging the public through its yearly Police Week campaigns, anti-GBV campaigns, and the Community Policing Week campaigns. The Infrastructure Development Unit is mandated to current studies and analyze the construction of police projects, plan, and execute construction works. Through the support of Rwanda National Police's partners, a lot of structures were constructed, rehabilitated, and renovated. 
These are Anti-GBV Block and Women Pavilion Facility, Isange One Stop Center, CID Center of Excellence, Joint Operations Center, Police Ethics Center, Peace Support Operations Training Center, Renovation and Rehabilitation of National Police College, Rehabilitation of Police Training School in Gishari. Rwanda National Police has also embarked on the living standards of the force, availing health care insurance, loans, and a housing scheme project built for police officers, enhanced staff transportation, buses, other vehicles, and motorcycles that were donated to the force. All this aim at responding to a highly sophisticated cross-border transnational crimes and criminals, posing a serious threat to the citizens of the globe. It is over 20% of police female officers in the force. This is to ensure no sources of gender discrimination and following the line of government policy of gender mainstreaming in its institutions with the mission of having capable and smart women in policing that will add value to the national police as a professional institution that potentially benefits the police and runners in general. This directorate has put in place systems and protocols to facilitate and coordinate all pertinent issues important to run the national police from foreign institutions, organizations, and countries that are all capable of teaming up with the institution through mutual beneficial cooperation. Rwanda National Police has actively placed its best foot forward by participating in peace support operations in several African countries, including Haiti. With over hundreds of highly professionalized servicemen and women determined to assist in laying the foundation of sustainable peace and security in troubled regions, with high levels of professional policing skills, they execute all tasks given and return home with medals. For service, protection, and integrity, Rwanda National Police are at your service. <laughs>